Tonight, the DuPont Company brings you Rain Fakers, starring Burgess Meredith on The Cavalcade of America. Rain Fakers is a story about the weather. And in our play tonight, a rainmaker is going to tangle with a scientist from the Weather Bureau. Now, if you don't know about the tricks that rainmakers use, you will find out in a moment. And ladies and gentlemen, the forecast for tonight is fireworks. But first, here's Gain Whitman. You may be lucky enough to be moving into a new home. In that case, congratulations. But all of us can have new-looking homes, and at such little cost. Paint those drab, weary walls with DuPont Speed Easy. See how bright and new your home will look. Speed Easy can be used on all interior wall surfaces. It's a resin emulsion paint, but you thin it with water. Apply with a large brush or roller right over wallpaper. It dries in an hour. You'll be surprised at how little it will cost. Ask your DuPont dealer for Speed Easy, another of the DuPont company's better things for better living through chemistry. Tonight we present Burgess Meredith as Walt Swanson in Rain Fakers on the DuPont Cavalcade of America. Ah, the weather. Everybody talks about it, but nobody does anything about it. Wrong. I'm sorry, but you're wrong. Huh? About what? The weather. People do do things about it. As a matter of fact, I did something about the weather once myself. Yeah? And who are you? My name is Walt Swanson. I'm a weatherman, a meteorologist, if you want to be highbrow. Mm-hmm. Well, how long is this rain going to last? This rain will last about one second. Oh, come now. Is that what you mean by doing things about the weather, having our studio sound man on your side? Not at all. I weigh the weather, record its temperatures, observe the direction of the wind, chart the course of storms, measure rainfall, predict floods, warn against hurricanes, and so far as is possible, provide weather information and accurate forecasts. Well, that's reporting weather, predicting it. That's not doing anything about it. Nobody can do anything about the weather. I did. I did once. Ah. Just what did you do, Mr. Weatherman? Well, it all began with Colonel Dazian, a rainmaker. It was quite a while back. Sound man? Yes, sir. A minute ago, you made me some dandy weather. No, that's, uh, uh, that's not what I want. Can you dig me up a hot July day? Say about 102 without a, without a breath of air stirring. How's this? Oh, that's perfect. That's right. Now, I'm on my way to work. But today, you see, I don't look forward to my job much. Uh, morning, Walt. Hello, Ed. It's hot again. Think of all the ice cream you'll sell. Oh, uh, folks ain't spending a the cent. They don't have to. Things like this. Well, it's got to break sooner or later. Ain't you got some idea when? Oh, I wish I had, Ed. Well, so long. So long. Now, that was uh, Ed Carr of Carr's Drug Store opening his place up. He's next door to the courthouse where the Weather Bureau is. Now, inside of the courthouse, I turn right and I, I start upstairs. Ah, ah, ah. Here's Mr. McDonald coming down the stairs as I go up. Well, this is kind of early for you, Mr. McDonald. You don't call these bankers hours, do you? I was just up at the Weather Bureau, Walt, looking for you. What's the matter? Am I overdrawn? I wish that's all it was. No, what's up? Well, I don't have to tell you how many farmers in this area have loans with our bank, and that's all right. That's what we're there for. We can't make money if we don't lend it. Just the same... Well? Many of those notes are due right now. More coming all the time. We'd like to extend them. Of course. But if the crop fails, they can't pay simple as that. So, uh, how do you think our chances look for rain, huh? Well, I, I, I can just tell you, Mr. McDonald, is that there's never been a drought yet that lasted forever. Well, if it lasts long enough to kill the crop, it might as well be forever as far as the bank's concerned. 
Can't you give me some idea when it'll rain? Look, Mr. McDonald, I don't control the weather. This drought isn't just a whim of mine. Now, there's no need to get excited. I merely asked if you knew when it would rain, and you don't. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to lose my temper, but this thing's been getting on my nerves. Well, something's got to be done, and I've got an idea. It's got to rain soon. I sure hope so. Oh, uh, will you be coming over at the house for dinner Sunday? You bet. Well, good. I'll tell Jane when I get home. Goodbye. Goodbye. Poor man, he, he, he's really upset. Now, do you hear that? That's the teletype in, in my office. The clearinghouse at Denver is sending us uh, weather reports from all over the northern half of the Western Hemisphere. You know, that man learned a long time ago that weather traveled. But as long as it traveled faster than men and horses, there was no way to spread reports in time to do anyone any good. But then the telegraph and the telephone changed all that. And weather forecasting, the way that we know it now, grew up side by side with modern, uh, modern communication. Ah, good morning, Jenkins. Morning, Mr. Swanson. Whew, ain't this a butte? <laughs> yeah, sure is. What's your dry bulb reading? 102 already. Any change in the pressure? No, I think this high is going to last forever. If we don't get some indication of rain soon, I'm going into a new business. Boss, your worries are over. Hello, Brownie. Why, what are, what are, what are you talking about? The drought. It's washed up. You can just lean back and relax. We'll be having rain any minute now. What do you mean? Oh, the Farmers Association is going to hire that eminent scientist, Colonel Daisy, in the rainmaker. And he's going to fix everything. You're kidding. They're having a big meeting tonight at the Odd Fellows Hall, and the colonel's going to be there. Hand me that phone. Who are you going to call? Well, I'm not going to sit here and let farmers pay out good money to a jip artist like the colonel. Hello, operator. Number, please. 229, ring two, please. Oh, oh by the way, some um, English professor called up from the state university. He wants to come over here and observe for a couple of days. An English professor? Uh, he's writing a book, believe it or not, on the weather in Shakespeare's plays. No kidding. I told him he could stand around and watch as long as he didn't get in the way. Okay with you? Sure, maybe he'll give us a copy of the book. Hello? <laughs> Hello, Jane. I knew it was going to be you, Walt. I could just tell the way the phone rang. <laughs> That's a deal I have with the phone company. Oh, I mean it, Walt. I did know it was you. I get feelings like that, and they're right most always. Coming to dinner Sunday? Haven't you got a feeling about that, too? I got a feeling we'll have roast beef. Oh, well, you couldn't keep me away. Say, Jane, is your father back yet? No, Dad's still out. Has he said anything to you about the Farmers Association hiring somebody called Colonel Dazian? You mean the rainmaker? Yeah, that's the guy. Oh, yes. Dad's going to talk to the folks about him this morning. Oh, thank heaven for that. People respect your father, and they'll believe him when he tells them that this colonel's a fake. What'd you say, Walt? That Colonel Dazian's a crook and a fake. That's what your father thinks, isn't it? Why, no. Dad likes him. It's his idea to hire him. Jane! And I think it's wonderful, too. We just got to have rain. Jane, this man can't make it rain. Well, that's not what the thousands and thousands of people say in the places where he's brought rain. They bless him and thank him. And pay him. Well, of course they pay him. It's worth anything to get rain. But all he does is to collect for rain that would fall anyway, and I refuse to stand by and see people swindle. If you ask me, you're jealous because the colonel knows more about weather than you do. Jane, it's... It's no good as arguing. I- I'll call your father later. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, how do you like that? Well, if the people want to pay a rainmaker, what do you care? It isn't your dough. Well, it isn't just the money, but every time one of those crooks gets away with a deal like this, the whole weather bureau looks silly. I don't like it. What are you going to do about it? Well, for one thing, you and I are going to attend that meeting tonight. <laughs> Sound man, I want the noise of wind, a great big bag of wind. I made rain in the vicinity of Springtown on the 16th of July. After 23 consecutive days of drought, I made rain in Lewisburg on the 18th of that month. Ah, that's just what I mean. A big bag of wind. And that old blowhard's brought out a good crowd, though. And they're not all farmers, either. Ed Carr's here from the drugstore. There's old man McDonald and Jane. And even the little professor who's writing the book has showed up. Nobody's laughing. Nobody's even smiling. Don't tell me that they believe that guy. And two days later in the area around Central City, I broke all my own records by bringing forth a full three inches of rain. But you folks, you folks aren't interested in what I've done in other places. You want to know what I can do here. Right, right. You said it. All right. All right, I'll tell you. I can make it rain. And I, I ask a question. Why, you certainly may, sir. Speak right 
up. Just how do you make it rain? The uh, Stasian method is quite a complicated scientific process, sir. Uh, uh, among other things, I discharge radiomagnetic waves into the upper regions. Uh, I doubt if I could make the process entirely clear to, to a layman. But I know something about meteorology. I'm head of the weather bureau here. Oh, so you're a fair weather friend. It's <laughs> <laughs> funny, but I think these people should know what they're getting before they pay. Uh, what they're getting, sir, is rain. If they don't, nobody pays me a cent. But when are you going to make it rain? That's the point. Sooner or later, the weather's bound to change its own accord. And I fail to see why you or anybody else should cash in on it. Nor do I, sir. The whole purpose of my method is to make rain where it will not fall naturally. You guarantee to make it rain within a specific period of time? Yes. Once the radiomagnetic rainmaker has been started, rain invariably falls within three days. Wait a minute. This. You guarantee that it'll rain here in three days? I did not say that, sir. But I will guarantee rain within three days from the time the radiomagnetic waves are launched. Of course, before I can turn them on, it is uh, sometimes necessary to spend a few days... Uh, is softening up the elements by other means. I see, like studying Weather Bureau forecast, Colonel. If I had to depend on the Weather Bureau for my rain, I wouldn't stay in business long, would I, folks? No, sir. They specialize in drought. Yes, <laughs> I ask you, what what good would weather reports do me anyhow? They're only two days ahead, and I start. Three. Yeah. How about it? Yeah. The Weather Bureau gives two days forecast because they aren't entirely accurate for longer than that. That's what the Colonel said. Yes, but, but any good meteorologist can predict three or four, even five days in advance, and be right more times than he's wrong. Well, what of it? Well, don't you see? Look, all a rainmaker's got to do is to get a hold of these early reports, start his mumbo jumbo, and gamble on rain. And seven times out of ten, he'll be right, and you pay through the nose. What we pay. It's our money, ain't it? It's your money, but why do you throw it away for nothing? You call rain nothing? Look, look, I've studied weather since I was 18 years old, and there's no known scientific method of making rain. Now, rain is caused by warm, voiced air rising. That forms clouds, and when these clouds condense, why, then it uh, rains. Uh, just a moment. You said rain was caused by hot air rising. Indirectly, it is, yes. And why, with all this guff and talk, why ain't it pouring now this minute? <laughs> these people, these people don't want theories. They want rain. Am I right? You said it. Rain. And if you want rain, that's what you're going to get. Rain. Rain. Well, you see what I mean? Brownie, let's get back to the office. I've got to make some long-distance calls. I'll show this pony up if it's the last thing I do. You are listening to Burgess Meredith as Walt Swanson, the weatherman in Rain Fakers on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. As the second part of our story opens, Swanson, with the aid of our studio sound man, is telling me about the time he tangled with Colonel Daisy and the Rainmaker. Uh, how do things stand now, Mr. Weatherman? Well, very bad indeed. You see, the Colonel got his contract, and I got hard feelings. Well, just a minute. At the beginning of this program, you said you were the one that did something about the weather. Yeah, I know. Well, I, I'm coming to that. Sound man, do you suppose you could fire a distant cannon every once in a little while? Oh, that's... Fine, that's fine. Now that represents <laughs> Colonel Dazian softening up the elements. See, one what? of the most persistent notions about weather is that gunfire or fireworks causes rain. And so many people believe it that it's a shame that it isn't true. It doesn't rain on the 5th of July anymore, it doesn't on the 3rd, you know. But uh, statistics show it often rains after big battles. Oh, sure it does. But Commanders don't want their armies to fight on soggy ground, so they wait several days after rain before ordering an offensive. You see, and by the time the battle's over, it's usually time for rain again. That's how that old wives' tale got started. Well, let's get back to the Weather Bureau. 
say, uh, Walt, you told me to let you know when the professor came back again. He's here now. Oh, good. Now, look, I want to see him. Uh, professor, you learning all about the weather? Well, it's, it's so complicated, I don't know if I shall ever get it straight. That's exactly the way I feel about Shakespeare. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> you know, Professor, you really ought to see our instruments on the roof. Uh, oh, I On think... the roof. Uh, Jenkins. Yeah, Walt. Yeah, but... Uh... I want you to take Professor Raff to the roof uh, and show well, him I... how we measure the upper air draft uh, with the balloon and theodolite. With okay, the... I... right this way, Professor. Oh, well, thank you so much, Mr. Jenkins. But, but if Mr. Swanson wouldn't mind, I'd prefer to go later, after the weather map's been made. That fascinates me more than anything. We'll still be on the map by the time you get down, Professor. Oh, yes. oh well, in that case, I'll go. Oh, watch them. these yeah. steps, oh, Professor. Oh, <laughs> kind of steep. Excuse me. Take it easy. That's right. Excuse brownie, me. brownie. Yeah. Wait a minute. Give me that map, will you? Yeah, yeah. Now, you take this map, and I'll hide yours down here. What? You can get it later when the professor's gone. What gives? This map doesn't match today's reports. The colonel's not the only guy that can make rain brownie. You and I are going to whip up some rain, too. Huh? Now, for days, I've been trying to find out where that old fraud gets his weather reports. You sure he works that way, Walt? Why do you think he keeps that cannon going day and night? It's just to fill in time till he knows for certain that rain's on the way. Then he turns that phony apparatus on. Only this time, when he turns it on... He won't get rain. I must be dumb, but I don't get any of this. Well, I've checked all the weather services. The colonel's not getting his information there, so he has to get it somewhere, but where? I'll bite where? Well, he's getting it from us. Who? This professor upstairs. Now, he's a fake. I called the university, and they never heard of him. Uh... I've got a hunch that he's an experienced meteorologist. You think he reads our maps and passes on the dope to the colonel? I'm certain. I know it. I, I phoned Springtown and some of those other places where this colonel's operated. And the professor, it so happens, has been observing in their bureaus at the same time that Dazian was in town. Now do you believe me? Huh. Dirty weather they got in Shakespeare's plays. You don't know how dirty. Look at this map that I gave you. Why, well, it's all wrong, Walt. The way you've got it here, we'd be getting rain in a few days. Yes, if only the professor thinks that way, we're all set. He'll tell the colonel that rain is due, and that old fake will turn that radiomagnetic gadget on too soon. Oh, it's a great scheme, Walt, but it's dangerous business issuing false reports. No, there won't be any false reports. You see, every day we'll make two maps. A regular one for the bureau and a special one for the professor. Showing a nice fat rainstorm right around the corner. Hey, quiet. Here he comes. Oh, thank you so much, Mr. Jenkins. That was fascinating. Oh, glad you liked it, Professor. Ah, still at the map. Still I at see. the map, yes. Now, there's some interesting changes here. Yes. Since really? yesterday. Now, look at this. You see, this week's line here, we call it a cold front. Uh, yes. Now, will you notice how it's moved south? Yes, yes, I see. I see. And you notice at this point that the barometric pressure has come down two millibars. Yes, yes, most interesting. Dear, dear, I, I hope someday I shall be able to what? Oh, my goodness. What's the matter? Oh, oh, I've just remembered there's a call I must make. Well, use our phone uh, yeah, right oh, here. Thank right? you, just the same. But <laughs> this is long distance. I, I'll just use the booth oh, down. Oh, surely. Yes. <laughs> Shh. Now, what did I tell you? You think he's going to phone the colonel? Well, I, I, I know it. Within five minutes, that rain machine will be going full blast. That means the colonel guarantees to bring rain within three days. <laughs> He'd better be some rainmaker. boy. <laughs> Now, sound man. Yes, sir? I got something tough for you. I want the noise of one radiomagnetic rain-making machine. How's this? Very good. That's perfect. Now, at the fairgrounds, the colonel turned the darn thing on, this machine on, the minute the professor called him. And the crowd's been collecting ever since, some of them carrying umbrellas. Oh, that's quite a gadget, Walt. I like those sparks flashing out of the Something, top. Something, it certainly wows the crowd. I don't know whether I like this gag or not, Walt. What do you mean? Well, folks get their hopes up and they don't get rain. Well, hello, Walt. I'm so surprised to see you here. Why shouldn't I be here? Oh, you were the man who thought the colonel couldn't make rain. Well, I still do. Well, just listen to that rain machine. Just listen. You can just feel it'll work. It will work, Jim. Jane, believe me that it won't work. Well, all I have to say to you, Walt Swanson, is that I hope you get caught without a raincoat or an umbrella or anything. Well, if I do, it won't be in the colonel's rain. Howdy, Colonel. 
Time's up. Uh, what do you mean, sir? Your contract guaranteed to produce rain within 72 hours. Three days. The three days are up. Well, uh, something technical seems to have gone a bit wrong someplace. Uh, I find it necessary to continue. Oh, oh, no. Why don't you give up, Colonel? There's not a cloud in the sky. My contract, sir, is not with you. It's with these gentlemen of the Farm Association here. Uh, right? That's right. It ain't uh, his business. Uh, I'm sure another few hours will do the trick, gentlemen. Well, uh, what do you fellas say? Now, before you say anything, Mr. Brown here and I want to tell you a little story about some weather maps. Well, friends, a few days ago, a stranger showed up at the office. Uh, at this point, Brownie and I told our story about Professor Raff and how he got the reports from the colonel. Well, you've heard it all, you know, so I see no point in repeating it. But anyway, it had a double effect on the farmers. First... They terminated their contract with the colonel. You faker, get out of town and stay out. Don't ever come back. And then they turned off his machine. And the next morning, they expressed their gratitude to me. Morning, Ed. Pretty smart, ain't you, mister? Uh, well, you must have got up on the wrong side this morning. Hello, Mr. McDonald. How are you? Well, Mr. Swanson. Sure showed that fellow up, didn't you? Yes, yeah. sir. Made us all look pretty foolish, too. Especially me. After all, Daisy and was my idea. Wait a minute. Well, if you're so all-fired smart, where's the rain? You haven't done very much about that, have you? Looks like you've showed yourself up, too. You'd only listen to reason. Oh, and uh, about dinner tomorrow, forget it. Jane said to tell you not to bother coming over. I see. Thanks. Boy, I sure picked the right way to win friends and influence people. Morning, Walt. Hello, Brownie. Oh, why the long face? Is Jane still sore? Jane, everybody's sore. Oh, that's what you get for showing people up. It's fatal. They really griped at the weather, you know. They take it out on me. Well, you fixed the colonel's wagon, anyhow. The way things are now, that's sort of cold comfort. Something special is cooking on the teletype. What's it say, Jenkins? Hey, get this. Cold front sweeping down from the north. What? Let me see that. Wonderful. Give me the phone. Brownie, get on the other phone, will you? Notify the Gazette and the radio station. Yeah. Uh, operator 229, ring two, please. Here's the rest of the report, oh, boss. Thanks, Jenkins. Look at... Oh, it looks like Colonel Daisy and left town just a little bit too soon. Oh? Jane, this is Walt. Really, Walt, I'd rather not talk to you. All right, don't talk to me. Just listen. I, I'm no Colonel Daisy or anything like that, but your rain is coming and plenty of it. Well, you know what they say. Believe You'll see it all right by noon tomorrow. Goodbye, Walt. And if you're fooling me, if you're just trying to be smart again, this is goodbye for good. Hello, Jane. Walt Swanson, you're drenched to the skin. Somehow I don't mind it. <laughs> oh, just look at you. Come inside and get out of those wet thanks, things. Thanks. Oh, quick, take that coat off. Right. Honestly, anyone who'd go out in a downpour like this. You know, I know that you weren't expecting me, but I... No, I wasn't. I guess that's why I set an extra place at the table and why I haven't let Dad start dinner. Oh, Jane. Oh, Walt, I think you're wonderful. I know you're a weatherman and all that, but how did you know the rain would start just when it did? Darling, it's really very simple. My corns hurt. Oh, <laughs> Nowadays, you can't find one person in a whole day's travel who believes in rainmakers. Now, that's partly due, as we have seen, to cheerful young scientists who set out to disprove the quack doctrine of the rainmaker. When we, the American people, need to get a job done, we don't rub our hands against a rabbit's foot. We roll up our sleeves and go to work. That's the spirit that has given America more and better practical applications of science than any other country in the world. Our 
star, Burgess Meredith, will return in just a moment. But first, here's Gain Whitman speaking for DuPont. Did you ever move a zipper up and down slowly and watch the way the little teeth lock together? Try it sometime. You can marvel at the thought and planning that go into an airplane engine or an automobile. But for downright ingenuity in a small package, a zipper is a minor miracle. You find yourself wondering who was clever enough to get the idea in the first place. How the little teeth are made so accurately. How they are attached in exact alignment so that a simple, easy sliding motion closes them. Soon now, zipper fasteners of DuPont nylon plastic will appear on ready-made clothing for women. Nylon fasteners can withstand boiling water and are not damaged by the ordinary heat of ironing. They will not rust, nor will they be affected by the usual dry cleaning solvents. So light that they can be used on the sheerest marquisettes and chiffons, they are strong and durable enough to give long service on heavy garments. And they can be run through a washing machine without trouble. The first to reach you will be black or ivory colored. But manufacturers plan to add a range of colors in popular shades. When our DuPont Research Laboratory produced the first nylon, no one in the DuPont company would have predicted that nylon would one day be used to make zippers. The vigilant, never-failing ingenuity of people working in other businesses, however, saw in nylon plastic a better material from which to make slide fasteners. Nylon plastic is one of the DuPont Company's better things for better living through chemistry. And now, our star, Burgess Meredith. Thank you. And now, if I may, I'd like to talk for a moment about traffic accidents. According to the National Safety Council, the traffic death toll during the holiday period is almost three times as great as for the same time during the rest of the year. To safeguard against accidents, reduce your speed while driving to fit the prevailing road and weather conditions. And remember, accidents don't always happen to somebody else. Each one of us is a potential accident victim. And no one of us can afford to be careless. So keep tragedy out of your home. Drive carefully. Thank you. Next week, the DuPont Cavalcade brings you Shirley Booth in The Woman on Lime Rock. It's an unusual and dramatic story of the sea, of Ida Lewis who in 1858 took her father's place as keeper of the light at Lime Rock, Rhode Island. For 52 years, Ida Lewis kept the light burning in fog and storm, good weather or bad, for the men who went down to the sea in ships. Be sure and listen next Monday at this same time to The Woman on Lime Rock, starring Shirley Booth on The Cavalcade of America. The music for tonight's DuPont Cavalcade was composed by Arden Cornwall and conducted by Donald Voorhees. Our Cavalcade play was written by Frank Gabrielson. In the cast with Burgess Meredith tonight were Ted Jewett as the Colonel, Vicki Bola as Jane, Edgar Staley as the Professor, Alan Hewitt as Brown, and Cameron Prudhomme as McDonald. This is Ted Pearson wishing all Cavalcade of America listeners a very happy new year from the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.